like Let's Play a Game. I give you a blank check and tell you you have as much time as you want to implement cybersecurity controls at your business. You go ahead and implement them, but then the question I'll ask you is, are you secure? You had a blank check, infinite money, so you had to have bought security, right? wrong. In this video, I'm going to explain to you why there is so much more to cybersecurity than just buying tech and how traditional vulnerability management is the old way of managing security posture and how continuous threat exposure management coupled with attack path management is the new hotness in protecting your business and its critical assets. And stay tuned to the end where I will tell you the proper way that you can introduce continuous threat exposure management and attack path management into your business's cybersecurity program. And if your SIA program is just being established or you're on the path of programming maturity, you're not going to want to miss that part. Let's go. Now, before we get this value train full steam, I do want to shout out the video sponsor, Simulate, whose platform I've used professionally and enjoyed. Simulate helped me see my org's actual cybersecurity posture and where I was grossly exposed and how I could fix it, but more about them later. Cybersecurity provides a structured approach to securing business assets, accounts, and data. There isn't infinite resources like money and time, so we have to be deliberate about where we choose to focus our resources. Introducing cybersecurity, attack path management. Cybersecurity attack path management is important because it helps keep your mission critical assets safe and sound. Think of it like a game of chess where you're trying to anticipate your opponent's moves and protect your most valuable pieces. In the world of cybersecurity, the attackers are like chess players trying to find the weakest link in your defenses and exploit it to their advantage. This could be anything from a poorly secured password to a vulnerable piece of software. Now, when we play chess against a player, we will oftentimes look forward a few moves. If I move here, they can move there and this this piece is at risk. We would never ever play chess without being able to see the opponent's pieces on the board. That's kind of what we do right now currently in cybersecurity. Let me explain. We as InfoSec professionals get threat intel. This is akin to knowing how the chess pieces move, you know, the rook moves up and down straight lines, the bishop moves on diagonals, and also what type of chess player we're playing against right now. Like what's the kind of strategy or philosophy? Are they super aggressive? Are they super defensive? So we know how the pieces work and we see where they are set up on the board in a chess game. We'll set up our defense defense and hope it's good enough to protect our king or our critical assets, right? But we don't know how the attacker is going to attack or what combination of weaknesses could lead to a full compromise. This is where attack path management comes into play, okay? Attack path management is the process of identifying these potential weaknesses and putting measures in place to protect against them. It's work because weaknesses can crop up all the time for a variety of reasons. It's kind of like playing a game of whack-a-mole. As soon as one weakness is identified, identified and addressed, another one pops up or two. It gets further complicated as threat actors refine, adapt, and modify their attack behaviors or tooling in response to defender decisions. It's like an epic game of cat and mouse. And literally, that's why cybersecurity is such an exciting field because it never is dull. But don't worry, you don't have to go it alone. There are tools and strategies that can help you manage your attack path surface and keep your digital assets and businesses secure. One such method is called threat modeling, which is a way of mapping out the potential attack paths that an attacker might take to breach your defenses. And this helps you in identifying the areas where you're most vulnerable so you can focus your efforts on strengthening those defenses. This can be labor intensive though and problematic because you might be missing key weaknesses. You may like favor one type of attack strategy. So you're always kind of looking at that one. So how do we address some of those weaknesses with that approach? Well, an additional technique is practicing your incident response capability, right? This can be done through tabletop exercises, which can be fun, get the business involved, but they're kind of like Dungeons and Dragons simulations, right? It doesn't have the the, oh, the urgency of an actual incident. You could do trial by fire, right? Actually responding to real incidents and just doing lessons learned every time and hoping you get better. Or you could do purple team in exercises, which is kind of a nice blend of both of these, where you launch controlled attacks and the incident responders validate that they saw the attack and then work through what the response would be like. Oh yeah, like, you know, this this technology fired, said, hey, we've got a problem over here. We quarantined the machine. We identified the compromise. Yes, yes, yes. Or, hey, we just fired an attack and you guys didn't see it. Like maybe we should revisit that, right? Uh, this is another great use use case for Simulate, the platform, it's cool, but I wanted to show you how I use Simulate to improve my InfoSec program specifically, which is the third kind of technique you can use to help with this attack path management. An important aspect of attack path management is regular testing and monitoring of your systems. This is awesome. This can help you catch potential vulnerabilities before they're exploited, and it can also help you respond quickly and effectively if an attack does occur, because you know 
the path that the attacker would likely take. Now is a good time to double click and expand on the variety of weaknesses I mentioned before. Harking back to our blank check intro, you may think that you can just buy the high roller package, right? The Cadillac of cybersecurity tooling. Give me the Grand Lux security package, right? That would mean no more weaknesses. And unfortunately, this is actually what the business often thinks. The CEO, the CFO, they think like, oh, if I just cut a check for a million dollars, we're secure, right? But that's not the case, right? Weaknesses come in a variety of ways, even with the high end tech. Weaknesses can still be system software vulnerabilities, right? That high-end tech can have security vulnerabilities. And this is what most people think of when they hear weakness or vulnerability is, uh, you know, security patches, right? Some vendor has released some security patch, yada, 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 right? Patch as soon as possible. These are weaknesses and should be patched, right? But sometimes they can't be patched or a patch gets rolled back or some system gets overlooked and only 90% of the systems get patched. Think of like the lab machines or the traveling salespeople computers that don't check in with the mothership with any regularity, right? So patching doesn't happen consistently, but do you have visibility over where those patches are applied? You might not, right? Additional weaknesses can come from misconfigurations when you're actually like deploying new technology, right? So the initial configuration. Not a week goes by without a story of some data breach resulting from a misconfigured database or accidentally making a system public. It's almost certain there will be a story every week about this, I guarantee you. A final weakness that can lead to compromise unless you're managing your organization's infrastructure to minimize threat actor attack path is shadow IT. Shadow IT is a tech that gets brought into the production environment without approval, without authorization, and without IT's knowledge. And it might seem innocent enough, right? But shadow IT can lead to increased attack surface, unmanaged systems, and terrible, terrible outcomes. So back to regular testing and validation of your controls, right? It's a mechanism to validate the controls you have in place, that they're working the way that you plan them to work, and validate that the tech in your environment is only the tech in your environment that it's supposed to be and that it's configured properly. So one way that I have continually tested the efficacy of my security controls is with Simulate. Simulate is a breach and attack simulation platform, security control validation platform that allows organizations to run simulated events that map real life attack scenarios onto their environment. And this goes way beyond running like just a PowerShell script or something. Simulate is constantly updated with emerging threats for you to test and understand if you are exposed to what's happening today, right? This is really interesting feature because pen tests are great. I have many pen tester friends and I value penetration testing, but the frequency with which a pen test is actually done doesn't align with emerging threat needs that are in the news today. Think for example, like proxy shell or log4j or something like that. Pen testers could test it for you, but realistically it would be like the earliest, like the fastest would be like weeks and realistically more likely months before you'd actually have a contract in place and terms and get on the pen test team schedule and be prepared for that pen test team to come in and do these testing long after the threat was emerging. Like it's just like a known threat at that point. So being able to quickly test for these emerging threats is a huge value as well. The best part for me of Simulate is that you can test the efficacy of your controls as often as you like. You can have daily or monthly pen test if you'd like. And as environments change in Carl and engineering, <laughs> put shadow IT on your network, you are much more agile to find and control those risks. It's being able to see the actual security posture of your environment. That's what I'm telling you, it's awesome. It's also crucial to have a robust incident response plan in place. This plan should outline the steps that you'll take in the event of a breach, such as alerting appropriate authorities, conducting a thorough investigation, implementing measures to prevent future attacks. You gotta remember, of course, no system is ever completely secure. As I said at the intro, even with infinite money, no system is completely secure. But by taking a proactive approach to attack path management, you can greatly reduce the likelihood of a successful attack and keep Keep your assets, your business assets, your critical assets, your user accounts, your data as safe as possible. And by using tools like threat modeling, regular testing and monitoring, you can keep your environment less likely to be compromised. And if they are compromised, reduce the impact of that compromise by preventing attackers from moving along their attack path to your org's crown jewels. Now, as I promised, a pro tip on proper implementation of threat exposure management and attack path management. While we would love to go from zero to optimize levels of cybersecurity program maturity in a flash, the reality is it does take time to mature a program. This is why like CISOs come in and, and have three-year roadmaps, right? Now, if your cyber program is working on maturity, threat exposure and attack path management is still for you. Don't think it's for advanced programs 
programs only. Just like some people think that like pen test is for advanced programs only. It's not true. There is a place where, and I would argue it's actually more valuable for the less mature programs because you get the visibility and the ability to prioritize findings, right? So to get started, start with a scoping exercise of all your external corporate owned assets for proper configuration patching and network topology, right? Assess the attack surface and threat exposure and prioritize any major issues for remediation. And that's beginning to come together, right? As it's coming together, you're doing that piece. Begin introducing your internal assets, rinse and repeat. You want to complete the same processes, just increase the scope. Now, again, with a product like Simulate, you can quickly see actual compromise potential and what the attack path can look like from the initial foothold. It's important to note this goes way beyond vulnerability management, which I would just do in a, a separate video altogether. But it is critical to note that you must be sure to mobilize all stakeholders that are involved with this process, right? So it's not just an infosec or cybersecurity capability right? If you identify all this attack surface, all this threat exposure, you're going to need people like application owners, IT, business stakeholders to get commitment in order to actually have real risk reduction. Now, once you're fully up and running, you can mature to different ways, right? You have choose your own adventure. By introducing red team professional engagements, you can mature it a little bit further. And by bringing in SaaS cloud softwares that your company depends on into the scope of your inventory, you're not going to be able to secure them, obviously. But if your data is there, it is part of your area that you need to be concerned with for threat exposure. Doing regular validation of controls, testing them, making sure that your tools are configured correctly for detection, making sure that your IT infrastructure is configured securely, not default, not crappy passwords, not misconfigured, not open to the public, right? And using a tool like Simulate can help you do this. There's two things to really point out here. One, you can do it fast, right? You could run it on your external network pretty quickly, depending on how big your network is, right? Obviously it scales, so the time will scale, but you can do it like while you're going to get a cup of coffee. Secondly, you can do it often, right? So you could literally have it run daily and just report any differences. Once you establish kind of a baseline of like, okay, our external network surface is properly secured. We're going to start looking internally. Well, if you just have that external surface done every single day, anytime Carl puts a new piece of tech on the network or anytime a junior analyst accidentally misconfigures a database to look publicly, you can use a tool like that to say, whoa, 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 which then further reduces your actual exposure time. How many times have we seen a news story? It was like this company found a public database that was exposed to the internet for six months. You don't want that, right? How about exposed to the internet for four hours? Not great but much better than six months. Thanks so much to Simulate for sponsoring the video. I have used their product. I do enjoy their product. I thought it was a great solution. If you're interested in checking out the platform yourself, go to the link in the description below. Very nice people. You can set up a demo, see what they're doing, um, or test it in your own environment. That's how I initially started with Simulate. That's gonna do it for this episode. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel that are gonna pop up in just a second. We're all about you know cybersecurity, education, knowledge, community, and network. I hope you had a good one. Until the next one, stay secure. Yeah.